Organizing our data can be so tough sometimes, but it is still such an important piece of the puzzle that we must include in our workflows. And that is why today we are going to learn about a new Microsoft Fabric Preview feature called Lakehouse Schemas. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the first question that we have to start with, of course, is what are Lakehouse Schemas? Well, thank you very much for asking. I'll make sure to let you know. Lakehouse Schemas are a very powerful preview feature within the Microsoft Fabric ecosystem. Simply put, they act as logical structures that allow you to organize, manage, and query data in your Lakehouse with SQL-like efficiency, much like you would in a traditional database. Think of a Lakehouse schema as a bridge between the unstructured and structured worlds. They enable you to define structured views over your semi-structured or raw data that is stored in the lake house. This makes it easier for analysts, engineers, and business users to query data using familiar tools and interfaces. So the next question would be, why use lake house schemas? Well, first, do they simplify data access? With schemas, you're able to create these logical views of your data that is easy for any of us to understand and use without duplicating or transforming the data unnecessarily. The second reason is that they improve collaboration. Teams can now share schemas and query the same Lakehouse data set with consistent structure and rules, which fosters alignment across departments. Third, they enhance performance and scalability by providing a structured layer over raw data. Lakehouse schemas allow you to leverage the Lakehouse speed and scale without the rigidity of traditional databases. So now that we have a good understanding of what are Lakehouse schemas and why we might use them, of course, I'm going to jump over to Fabric to show you what I'm talking about. So I will see you over inside of Fabric. All right, y'all. So here I am inside of Fabric. And what I've done is created a lake house here for us already. But a big question that we have here is how exactly do you enable lake house schemas? Well, remember that this is a preview feature and Microsoft is very clear about that. So even though I've already created a lake house for today's demo, I'm going to create a new one or pretend like I'm going to create a new one by selecting new item and coming down to my lake house. So whenever I go to create a new lake house, take a look and notice, I could put my name here, of course, for the lake house, but it says right here, lake house schemas, public preview. And when I create a lake house, if I check this box, then my lake house will be a schema enabled, which is very cool. Just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna select cancel here and I'm gonna open up the lake house that I created for us today. Now I'm gonna select this lake house and you can see doesn't seem like there's a whole lot more going on right now than there would be in a normal lake house explorer, but there is. I'm gonna go over to my tables section in my lake house explorer and select a dropdown. Notice that I have a DBO schema. Very interesting. This is going to be the default schema in every schema enabled lake house that you create. Very cool. So if you go to create a new table and you don't specify what the schema is, it's going to default to this DBO schema. Very interesting. I'm going to close that up for now. You might have noticed I already have a table there. But what we care about is how do we add a new schema? It's actually very, very easy. So if you're following along with me here, you just want to select the ellipses next to your table section and select new schema. And for this schema, I am going to create this schema to be my bronze layer. The example that I wanna use here is the medallion architecture where we have a bronze layer, we have a silver layer, and we have a gold layer. So as we go through the process of cleaning up our data, transforming our data, then we're gonna start with the bronze. The bronze is gonna be our raw data. Then we might move over to the silver layer where we've transformed our data, we've cleaned it up to the point that maybe you could create a report from it, gain some insights, but the data might still not be where it needs to be to be considered that gold one source of truth layer. So for now, I'm just gonna create a bronze layer and select create. 
<laughs> it just creates it right there for us, very easy. Now I'm gonna select a new schema once more and I'm gonna call this one a silver. So this is great. This is really cool. I have a bronze schema and I have a silver schema, but as of right now, there's nothing inside of it. So what I've done is in my file section, I've uploaded a holiday CSV file. It just contains information about different holidays. And what I'm gonna do is load this to a table inside of my bronze schema. So I'll select the ellipses here, select load to tables, select new table, and then notice, it says that my schema DBO is default are selected by default, but I have a drop down now that displays to me the other schemas that I've created. So I'm gonna select bronze. And now my new table name, I'll leave it as holiday. I wanna make sure that I do use that header for my column names. And then I have a comma separator because it's a CSV file. At this point, I can select load. And this is gonna take a moment to load to create this new Delta table. So I will see you in just a moment. All right, y'all, it finished loading and now from that CSV file, I have now created a new table and it is uh, located inside of my bronze schema. This is really great. And keep in mind with this medallion architecture example, this would be so great because we're not only organizing our data, but we are also giving this schema a name that is specifically letting us and anyone else that has access to this data know that this holiday table, this is our raw data and it's most basic form or at least in the form where it needs the most help to get where it needs to go. So a good example that I want to use here to give us an idea of where would there be a situation where we could take advantage of these schemas instead of just placing our tables in them for one reason or another. And to do that, I want to create a data flow. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my workspace. And right now, my lake house is in a folder. I can't create a data flow inside of a folder, at least for now. So I'm gonna go back to my entire workspace as it is and select new item. And then I'll come down and select my data flow gen two. It is going to create this data flow for me. And all I wanna do here, now I'm gonna rename this to, we'll call this YouTube demo. And all I want to do is bring in that table from my bronze schema and I'm going to load it back to the lake house. So I'm going to select get from another source and I want to select one lake data hub. And you can see my lake house schema YouTube demo lake house is right here. I can select it. And once I do, it's going to give me access to that table and I can see it right down here. Bronze holiday. Notice when we are connecting to data inside of our lake house uh, enabled or our schema enabled lake house that the table is not just holiday here. It's bronze holiday. So I know now that I want to select bring in to my data flow gen two my bronze dot holiday table. So I'm going to select to create. Now this is going to take just a moment for it to load. So I'll see you in just a sec. And now it's loaded. So now that I have this query loaded from my holiday table and of course the bronze schema, let's say that I have already performed some transformation. I've cleaned up my data and now I want to go ahead, move this data over into the silver schema. Well, I can do that right here. So I'm going to select add data destination and select my lake house as that destination. I'll select next and continue forth by selecting the workspace that my lake house is in. And then of course, selecting the lake house that I want to send this data to. And that would be my lake house schema lake house. I want to rename this because notice it says it wants to name it bronze holiday. We're just going to leave it as holiday. And then I can select next. Mind you, I'm creating a new table at this point. If I wanted to, I could update my settings here, but I'm going to leave them as is for this demonstration. And I'm going to save settings. Beautiful. Now, all I've done is loaded a table from my bronze schema in my lake house to a data flow. Then I'm selecting a destination, that destination being my lake house. If you're wondering, well, you didn't specify that you want to send it to the silver schema yet, Zane. Let me just hold on for just a second because that's going to be our next step in just a moment. But for now, we need to publish our data flow. 
So I'm gonna publish this data flow. This is gonna take just a couple of minutes to finish publishing, and I will see you inside the lake house once it's all done. And here we are, folks, back inside of the lake house, and take a look as something big has changed here. So what have we done? Well, take a look. Inside of my bronze layer, I have my holiday table. We knew that, that was there just a moment ago. But what else do I have? Well, nothing in silver, but definitely something in DBO. And that is because as of right now, when it comes to the data flow Gen 2s, it doesn't give us the opportunity to load a new table to a new schema. However, that's perfectly fine because of another awesome feature that we have with Lake House schemas, which is all I need to do to change the schema that this table is attached to is click the table and drag it down over to silver. And just like that, I have now changed this holiday table, this new transformed and cleaned up set of holiday data. I've now just moved it right over to the silver schema, which is great. Now, you might be wondering, Zane, does that cause any problems down the line? And the answer to that is not if you're careful, because if you are referencing the silver schema, let's say, in a notebook. So you've connected to this lake house. You are saying, hey, look, I want the uh, holiday table in the silver schema. That's fine. You can do that, of course. However, if I come in here now and I move this table specifically from the silver table, or excuse me, the silver schema to the gold schema, well, I'm gonna need to make sure that I go back to those notebooks and update how I am connecting to the data because now it's pointing to the wrong schema and you're gonna jump into problems there. So you just need to be aware of that. But still, nonetheless, this is so cool. All we have to do is click and drag. So this is great. Now we have our table inside of the silver schema. And just to give you a quick little scenario here of what this would look like day to day, let's say that I put my data flow on a schedule. So let's head back over to the data flow. So I'm gonna head back over here to my YouTube demo data flow. And let's say I am now going to finish this data flow to make sure that this is in its best condition to append or update the table that I have inside of my silver or bronze or gold schema every day. So what I need to do to make sure this is ready to go is select the setting gear as I've just done for my data destination. I'm gonna go through these steps one more time and instead of adding a new table here, I just want to select an existing table. And remember, I now have that holiday table in the silver schema. So if I come on down and I open up my lake house, then you're gonna see I have not only bronze holiday, but silver holiday. Very cool. So now let's say that new uh, data has come in, we've connected to that data from some external data source, maybe an internal data source, we've cleaned up that data, now we're going to move it and update our table in the silver schema. Well, I can do that right here. So when I select next, of course, I can either replace or append these values and continue on and so forth. And then I can put this data flow on a schedule. And just like that, now you have your data being updated properly, at least using a data flow gen two on a schedule while leveraging schemas the entire time and keeping your data organized. Very important. I'm not going to do this now. I'm just going to select to cancel here and head back over to my lake house. So I'll close the data flow, head back over to the lake house, and we'll continue on. Now, by the way, of course, as many of you already know, Dataflow Gen 2 is not the only answer to updating our data. We can use pipelines as well. And pipelines, you can absolutely select which schema you are attaching to a table that you bring into your lake house. Very, very good news. Now, another cool feature that I want to show you here with lake house schemas is shortcuts. Now, if you know Fabric, and I'm sure many of you do that are watching this video, if not, welcome to Fabric. Well, we have shortcuts, but not just any shortcut, something just a bit cooler, let's say. A bit cooler, in my opinion, because normally what shortcuts are gonna do for you is simply virtualize your data or someone else's data that gives you permission into your lake house where you're not copying or duplicating the data, you're not changing who owns the data, you're simply bringing that data, virtualizing it 
into your lake house to use it. And of course, this is going to do the exact same thing with this new feature with lake house schemas, but just with a little bit extra pizzazz. So if we wanted to create a shortcut here, a special shortcut with a bit extra pizzazz, I would select the ellipses and select new schema shortcut, not just shortcut. And once I've done this, I'm going to select my Microsoft One Lake internal source. I'll select this lake house that I know has lake house schemas enabled. And I'm going to open up my table section and notice so cool here. I can now select to bring over to virtualize in my lake house an entire other schema from a different lake house. Very cool. Now, if you are still learning about Fabric, if you want to learn more, then check the link in the description to uh, walk through our Fabric Analyst in a Day course completely for free, of course. Now, also, I will say check the link in the description as well for another link. If you like to learn on your own at your own pace and you want to dive into that intermediate to advanced levels of these technologies, then check out our yearly subscription where you would get access to my colleague Man Wells course teaching you about one lake and the lake house. What are they? How do you use them? Anyways, check that link in the description. I hope to see you there. Continuing on, I am going to select cancel here. I don't want to shortcut this schema over. I already have a bronze schema here in this lake house, but just know it is a very, very cool feature there for you. A big question I think that is important to answer here. Uh, and a question when the this new feature came out that I had is why would you not just use a warehouse? We have the lake house. It's read only. At least the SQL endpoint is read only, right? We're, uh, we're able to create views, store procedures and more. But in a warehouse, we can do a lot more. So why lake house schemas, not just a warehouse? Well, the answer really lies in the nature of your data and workflows. Warehouses are great for structured data with predictable query patterns, but they can still be fairly rigid, only structured data, right? And on the other hand, the lake house schemas allow you to maintain the flexibility of a lake house while adding structure where needed. This hybrid approach works best when you're dealing with semi-structured or constantly changing data sets. With lake house schemas, you're not forced to move data into a warehouse for querying. Instead, you're able to work directly inside of your lake house with SQL-like capabilities while saving time and resources and keeping your data organized. Now, one of the things I've made sure to leave out here in our example is the fact that I didn't add a gold schema. And why would I not add a gold schema here? Well, just to kind of give you a little pointer on what I've seen others do, which is use your lake house and warehouse together. And what I mean is the lake house, we can have semi-structured, we can have unstructured data here. So once we've cleaned it up, we've got our data in the bronze schema, then we have it in the silver schema. One of the really cool things that you could do here is once you have that gold standard, that single source of truth of this data that we have in our lake house, I'm bringing it right over to the warehouse and have your gold schema there where you have all the data structured, you have more SQL capabilities, it's not just read only, and you can work with your data from there. That is just one example of what I have seen people use lake house schemas in conjuncture with the warehouse. You know, one of the other questions is what are the drawbacks for lake house schemas? Because they are, or remember that this is a preview feature. Now, it will be GA at some point, according to documentation uh, from Microsoft, but also for Microsoft, they're very open about some of the drawbacks. For example, we do not have table maintenance with lake house schemas or uh, the ability to update table properties using the schema. We're not able to have uh, workspace names uh, containing any special characters. We don't have Spark views or Hive specific features. You're also unable to migrate um, existing non schema lake houses to a schema based lake house either. And there's some other drawbacks as well. And I'll make sure to leave a link to some Microsoft documentation on this topic in the description. But there you have it. That in a nutshell is what lake house schemas are. It is a way, a game changer for us to organize our data, to add this new feature in a way that can make us more efficient and clear a bit of the clutter out of our minds as we work through these complex solutions and our organizations. So if there's a way that we can make our life easier, why not take advantage of it? Please do let me know down in the comments, what do you think about lake house schemas? Is it something that you can see yourself using? Maybe, maybe not, and tell me why. 
I hope that you enjoyed this video, everybody. My name is Zane Goodman with Pragmatic Works, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.